walking. I tend to walk, so I take a walk for an hour and get out of the chair and out of away from my story and I think about the problem and I mean more times than not I come back from my walk and I have the answer. I'll even have mm. like an entry into the scene in a new way just from walking because I think it, my my body processes some of the stuckness out when I walk. I don't know, it's really kind of mystical to me, but it's it's a, it works a lot. Hi friends, this is Read and Write with Natasha podcast. My name is Natasha Tynes and I'm an author and a journalist. In this channel, I talk about the writing life, review books and interview authors. Hope you enjoy the journey. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Read and Write with Natasha. Today I have with me Mary Carol Moore, who's a best-selling and award-winning author of 16 books in three genres. Uh, she received her MFA from Goddard College and has taught throughout the US and abroad at various writing schools and universities. Her writing craft book, Your Book Starts Here, won the New Hampshire Literary Award Reader's Choice Award. In her most recent novel, Last Bets, female ambition and morality collide in the darkness of a gambling underworld. Wow. Mary, uh, do you want me to call you Mary or Mary Carol? Mary's fine. Thank you. Mary's fine. Okay. Mary, uh, I'm so happy to have you here. Really impressed by all the novels that that you wrote. (laughs) And your uh, most recent novel sounds um, intriguing, you know, gambling. So you tell us about about the book. Are you a gambler yourself? No. (laughs) And uh, well, it's okay. No judgment. (laughs) So if you can just tell us a bit about the book, what was the inspiration? And so the floor is yours. Well, I, I was fascinated by the idea of people using second sight or paranormal powers to win in a game. Like The Queen's Gambit is a great example of a show that people love because the woman could see the chessboard in the air before the plays were made. So I designed a character who would be able to, she's a portrait artist, and she sees the future of the people she she paints. And it's gotten her into trouble. But she also has used those powers. Her father was a gambler to win backgammon. And backgammon is a huge tournament game with high stakes in the Caribbean. So this is set in on the island of Bonaire in the Netherlands Antilles, where she has to face the idea of whether she's going to, she needs money desperately. Is she going to use her powers for good or selfish reasons? And what is she going to do when she's faced with this desperate situation? So she, um, she can see the backgammon board ahead of time. And she teams up with another gambler down there during her, her time. And uh, she has to decide what she's going to do with that. So it's called last bets because it's basically her last chance to decide, you know, what's she going to do with this power that she both loves and hates, this ability to see the future. Oh, wow. So it's interesting, backgammon. So I was born in the Middle East. I think you can tell from the accent, but uh, backgammon is huge. Uh, My dad always plays backgammon. (laughs) So I was curious that you, uh, okay, so why not in the middle? I think it was originally... I think it was created in Iran, right? If I'm not I think mistaken. so, somewhere. So, yeah. mm-hmm. it's okay. a, it's so a, what, why did you decide that the Caribbean rather than the Middle East, which is the origin of, of Baghdad? <laughs> well, the, the idea for the novel came when I was, I'm a scuba diver, and I was down in the Caribbean oh, wow. diving. <laughs> okay. And I was on this island named Bonaire, and I sat at the, uh, at the tiki bar one afternoon, and this guy was telling me the story of how he lost his yacht in a high-stakes backgammon game. And I said, well, backgammon, that's like a parlor game. You know, it's not anything like poker. And he said, no, it's actually one of the more difficult games because it requires skill, not luck. And so I got fascinated with this idea that, and I researched it and I found that the Caribbean was a kind of hot spot for wealthy people to come and actually bet, bet high stakes, like thousands and thousands of dollars. So I thought, well, what a great place for this woman to go. She has a commission she's finishing of a wealthy man's portrait on the island. So she goes to finish it. And then she realizes, oh, she could get involved with the games. 
and earn like tons of money and save her financial situation, which is abysmal. So I'm fascinated with the whole idea. I like backgammon. I can play it, but I never knew that it was kind of a a big deal game, like poker players maybe graduate to it after they get tired of the the luck and skill balance in poker. And then they go into backgammon and they realize this is for skill and I can get really good at it and then I can win lots. So I, oh, wow. I'm just fascinated with it. Yeah. The idea of morality too, like what will people do to get what they need? And what, where is the line between right and wrong for people? You know, that's the that was one of the big questions I was asking in the book as I wrote. So when I read your uh, memoir, I read a line that really fascinated me: is that you started writing when you're fifty. Uh, <laughs> you went you went to school when you're fifty. You got your MFA and you started, uh, you know, like midlife. Uh, is is that correct? Yes. I I was okay. a journalist like you. I was a food journalist. Okay. I wrote for the LA Times food Syndicate. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I wrote lots of cookbooks and I won awards and that was a big career for me. And it was really stable and I was doing really well. But I had this desire to write fiction. I've always wanted to write fiction. So I had a big experience in my 50s. I had I was diagnosed with breast cancer and it was very serious. And, you know, those kinds of experiences where you face your life and you say, what haven't I done? If I had to die tomorrow, what what would really bother me that I hadn't done? And the thing that really bothered me was that I hadn't written fiction. I hadn't learned how to write fiction. So I I quit my career. I quit my food writing career and I had saved up enough money to live on for two years. So I went ahead and went to uh, Goddard and got my MFA. And then my first novel was published. And it was just, is like a dream come true to do that, but it was so risky. I mean, really considering, oh, wow. you know, giving up something that was so stable and so well-paying, but I had to do well, it. Good, good for you. And glad that you're feeling better Thank now. you. So, okay. I love the ideas of, of taking a risk. Uh, you know, I'm in the same boat. I was career in journalism, also worked on corporations and communications department, and now i um, on my own. I run my own LLC where I provide content and write novels and all of that. So the question that I always like to ask, how sustainable is this life? And I mean, you don't have to answer if you don't feel comfortable, but uh, is it sustainable? How sustainable? And uh, would you go back to uh, being a journalist uh, working for an organization? No, I wouldn't. So it was okay. it was hard for about five years. That's a really good question because a, a lot of people think, well, I'm going to write a novel and then I'll earn a huge amount of money from it and then I'll be <laughs> fine. And they don't realize what the, nope. the industry is like. So I did it because it was a, ju- a dream I had to fulfill, but I had saved money to, to support myself. And that was the okay. only way I could do it. I don't think that book writing is necessarily a sustainable income for most writers. Okay. Yeah, but so I teach or I have taught for um, mm-hmm. years now to support my writing habit, if you want to call it that. Yeah. So that's the only way I yeah. was able to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I I talk to a lot of authors and most of them have something to support it, either teaching or uh, selling courses or, or others. So you you teach writing, correct? I taught for many, many years. Yeah, I'm retired now. I decided that I had finished up. I, I coached writers and I taught writers and I decided I had finished up. And I'm going to be 70 in a few months. So it was time for me. It was time for me to stop and, yeah. and uh, just focus on my own writing. So that's been an incredible pleasure, I tell you. I love it. So how, like, where is the... Uh... I think the industry going right now when it comes to writing, you know, you, you've been in the industry, you coach writers, where are we? I mean, there's a lot of transformation happening with the rise of KDP and self-publishing, cancel culture, uh, you know, focus on diversity, LGBT. There's a lot of things happening. And, um, where are we? How, you know, I'm just curious to, to get your assessment. Well, I always thought that there was a real uh, line between traditional trad publishing and indie publishing and that the line would never be crossed. And I think we're seeing that that is not true anymore. I, I really, I'm really seeing a lot of um, 
industry comments about how self-published writers can actually do very well. They actually can make yeah. more money than trad published. And I saw Cheryl Strayed, who wrote Wild, the um, beautiful memoir, very bestseller. And she had a um, she has a Substack newsletter, and she interviewed um, a woman who actually was published by She Writes Press. She Writes Press is a is a hybrid, so that's kind of an indie yeah. uh, type of book. And she is promoting this woman who was published by She Writes Press. So I saw that as an indicator. I also I know that um, Brooke. Brooke is um, also, she's the, the CEO of She Writes, and she's working with Simon & Schuster now, I heard. And so there's a lot of things mm. that are kind of merging between the different avenues of publishing. So it's not as cut and dried as it used to be. I have an agent. Yeah. I've been published by many different kinds of publishers, trad, you know, big, big publishers, little publishers, and I've also gone indie. So I've actually made more money on the indie books than I have on the traditional published books, but it takes a lot more effort on the right, on the part of the writer. So the author, the author really has to promote, I, I think it's a little, that's a really big area of my thinking right now about writing and how it's going. But I think it's old fashioned to think that we can produce books ourselves, write them, get them published by someone else or publish them ourselves and not promote there's not a way yeah. to get your book out anymore. I mean, millions of books are published every year. How are you going to get your book out? So to be able to con concern yourself with the publishing aspect and the promotion aspect is kind of the deal breaker for writers right now. You can't just write the book and then expect it to do well. It has to be oh. put out there and shared with people. And you have to find a way to talk about it that is meaningful to you and meaningful to the person that you're talking to. So that's, a, that's kind of where I think it's going. People are looking for meaning. They're looking for relationships with authors, meaning that they want to know the person behind the book, not just the book itself. That's where I'm seeing yeah. a change. It's really kind of fun and wonderful what's happening. So the industry is, you know, a lot of people say it's really in trouble and all that, but I actually see it as just full of opportunities now for people in all levels traditional or self-published so i'm curious so you this book was it traditionally published or self, the it's last, self -published. The last yeah uh, this okay. one is an indie mm -hmm. i decided to go why so yeah what happened with the agents and and how did you find your agents i, I just want to hear the about thing. the whole journey because right. many many authors have a really hard time finding agents oh, i know and uh, I just want to hear about your your journey, just to inspire those who's listening or or watching. Well, I had I had um, an agent with my first book way back in the '80s, and I worked with him for a number of years, and he sold several books for me. And then, okay, um, he he retired, so he turned me over to someone else, another agent, and a very very high level one in New York City. Um, I knew the firm, you know, the agency and all, but that didn't work out. We we ended up parting ways because it wasn't a good fit for me. And at that time, yeah. I was very un unaware of how publishing worked. You know, it was the 90s at that point. And I wanted to see if I could sell a book by myself. And so I did. I sold two or three. And I thought, well, who needs an agent? You know, this is really working for me. I, I'm making money. I get royalties and everything happens. But and I knew I had to promote them myself, which is not any different than what I had to do with the agented books. And then there was a point with my, my first novel got published by a small press and I did not have an agent for that. And then I was thinking, well, maybe there's something I'm missing here. Is there, is there a benefit I would have from using an agent to further my career? I want to write two more books for sure. I have one pretty complete ready to send out. And so I shop for an agent. And this was in um, 2015, 16, something like that. And it took me a year. I queried uh, probably 40 agents before I got somebody that was really interested. I, a lot of people wanted to see the manuscript, but it wasn't a good fit for some reason. So then I finally found somebody who really liked it. And we signed, I signed with her. And then she's a very hands-on agent. She wanted to edit a lot. And some agents don't do that, but this one did. And I was glad because I liked, uh, I really respect editors. And she did a wonderful job with that novel. And she tried to sell it and it was not able to be sold. I, we got tons of positive comments. I mean, I couldn't believe the 
the rejections were so positive. But the reason that it didn't sell was it didn't fit in any sellable category. My books tend to be cross genre. Mm. So I had written a thriller that was literary and that's not an easy sell. Uh, There are only a few literary thriller writers that I know of. So I, she said, you know, you might be able to just take this yourself and, and publish it. And so I did. And so I've, I've really enjoyed the process. It's, um, Gosh, it's not any different in a sense than what I experienced with traditional publishing in that I still have to promote. I still have to do all the work that I did before. I do have to front money, but then I get paid back. So it's a it's a really interesting experience. And I, I'm not sure I recommend it for everybody, but that's the way I ended up going after many years of trying all different kinds of publishing. And I still love and work with my agent and, you know, she'll try to sell my next one to a major publisher. We'll see how it goes. But I'm, I'm very comfortable with this place right now that I'm at. So how do you self-publish? What do you use? Oh, what I have to hire a team. Platforms? I have to hire a okay. team. So I have a whole group of people that I work with. Uh, I work with a project manager. I work with an editor. I work with a typesetter. I work with um, a proofreader. I work with a cover designer. Um, let's see what else I have there. Um, somebody who does the ebook and another a, a narrator who does the audiobook. So it's basically like being a contractor for your own house. You know, you're hiring all the people and you have to vet them, you know, make sure that they're good and that you like working with them. Like the audiobook narrator, I had to audition about six narrators for, for the right one and really love this person that, that I ended up with. So it's a lot of work. You know, not everybody would want to do it, but I've, like you said, I've been in the industry for a long, long time and I kind of know it better than maybe other people do because I've, I've been published, okay. but I've also worked as an editor. So it, it, it ends yeah. up being a cumulative experience for me that I can use now for my own books. Where do you find these people? Oh, that's BC hard. BC or, yeah, where do you find them? Well, I tried Fiverr. Fiverr was a good resource for me for a while. I tried to find a cover designer on Fiverr and I I just didn't succeed there. So I have a lot of contacts of other people in the industry. And so I just started emailing and and texting people and saying, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a really great cover designer. And finally, I got a response from somebody that I knew in Minneapolis who worked with a couple of cover designers for books that she produced. And she, she referred me to Jeannie Lee, who's a, again, Minneapolis uh, artist, and she's fabulous. So she's, she sent me five cover designs and I couldn't even choose, you know, they were all so good. So that's the kind of person I really wanted to work with. So I was very lucky. It's taken a while to find people though. Yeah. Fiverr was a good option, but um, you have to be very careful, you know, find, make sure that you like the people, the Cheapest people on Fiverr are not necessarily the best. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I use Fiverr for audio editing to edit my podcast as well. I I'm I'm lucky. I found a very good audio editor, and that really saves me a lot of time. So, what about the marketing? You do it yourself, or do you have a marketing firm? I have um, several publicists that I've worked with. One does podcasts, so she was the one that you talked to and got her got you me on here. And that's been yeah. great because I needed a podcast help. I have booked myself on podcasts before, but it's a lot of work to research. So that was something I knew I needed help with. And I also... Yeah, I, I work with your publicist all the time. She always refers she's to me good. like really good. Yeah, she's, she's very, very good. good. Yeah. Then there was... Um, I wanted to do um, a bookstagrammer tour for Instagram okay. book people. And I asked, again, I asked around to find out, like, I didn't even know how to to find somebody really. And I got a a line on um, a woman who does tours and she's called Susie's Approved Blog Tours. And she, you know her too. Oh gosh. Well, you're really in the industry too. So she, (laughs) she's done two book tours for me, a cover reveal, which is happening today for Last Bets. And yeah, and then she does the launch tour and it's been great. She gets about 18 bloggers to post that day or the two days that we do it. And it's just been fabulous. That's the one that because of her tour, my last book went to the Amazon bestseller level in three categories, just from the bloggers. 
So that's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Good for you. So what was, so you think the blog tour was like in terms of your marketing efforts, what was the, gave you the, the highest ROI? I think the blog tour did. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. The blog tour. Okay. And it's so funny because it's not very expensive. I think it's $75 for the cover reveal yeah. or something. And yeah. the fact that I guess a lot of people, you know, are online and they love books and they follow these bookstagrammers. One, one person had 54,000 followers. So wow, even, uh, you know, an, a, a tenth of those people getting interested would be fabulous. So yeah, it was, it was yeah. a, it's a really, it's a cool thing. And I didn't know about it. And um, so I'm really glad I tried it. So in terms of, I'm just getting technical here, uh, getting in the weeds, but in terms of publishing, did you use Amazon KDP or? No, I didn't. I used Ingram Spark. I've published with KDP once. Uh, they're very good and you get a higher percentage, but they're limited as far as distribution. So you don't get your book into, oh gosh, Target, Walmart, you know, bookshop.org, all those places. So I, I wanted a, a bright, broader distribution this time. So I, I went ahead with um, Ingram Spark and I've been very happy with them. And Ingram Spark, do they just take Roy, do they take a cut or do they have to pay them up front? No, you don't pay them up. Well, let's see. No, you don't pay them up front. Uh, they take a okay. percentage. Yeah, they take a percentage. Trying ah, to remember okay. back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's that's good to know. Oh wow. Um, so what is what is your routine, daily routine like? I mean, you published a lot of books. Mm -hmm. How many hours do you write? Do you write every day? Like what's what what's your secret? <laughs> When I'm producing a book, meaning I'm in the drafting or revision stage, I write every day. And I usually write in the morning. Uh, when my son was in, still in high school, I would have to get up really early, you know, before everybody was up and I'd write for an hour or two hours. And then I basically catch time between things. That was one, one time of my life. He's got, grown and gone to his own life now, so I have much more time. But mornings are best for me, and I tend to write two to three hours in the morning. And then again, sometime in the afternoon, I'll come in, you know, work on something. Um, when I'm in a book, really deep into it, it's very hard for me to not write. I get a lot of mm. momentum, and I'm, I'm not somebody that tends to get stuck very fast. So if I do get stuck, I've got like a whole bunch of things to get me unstuck. And I have really good support in terms of my writing partner and my writer's group. So I can always mm. text them and say, help, <laughs> you know, can I send you a chapter that's definitely not working? And then I get some feedback and it keeps me going. So that's been a very oh, important part nice. of my, my writing life. So what are your tricks to getting unstuck? Sorry. My tricks to getting <laughs> unstuck? Well, help having help. Walking. I tend to walk. So I take a walk for an hour and get out of the chair and out of, away from my story. And I think about the problem and I mean, more times than not, I come back from my walk and I have the answer. I'll even have mm. like an entry into the scene in a new way just from walking. Because I think it, my my body processes some of the stuckness out when I walk. I don't know. It's really kind of mystical to me, but it's it's it works a lot. That was one. That's one. Yeah, one. I agree. It, it happens with me as well. Has it? When do you have time? to market because marketing sometimes it takes more mm -hmm. time than the actual writing of the book yeah. and do you do it at night uh, like I tend to to do the marketing like before I go to bed because that's when my uh, creative juices are like at their lowest mm -hmm. uh, and, that's good. and I don't need to be that creative with marketing uh, you know unlike uh, writing and creative fiction what, what about you that's about the and how same. many hours did you how many hours do you dedicate to marketing and what's your marketing strategy? When I'm doing uh, the marketing for a book, so say now I have my last bets is out and it's going to be published in April and I have these months between today, cover reveal and April to promote it. I will put in hours every day in marketing. I will put in maybe three to four hours a day. I have to set up so many things to make it work like I... I have videos that I make of the of different topics around the book that I post. My website, of course, updating that and any kind of things I can think of. The podcasts, of course. The blogger tour starts kind of a momentum going on Instagram. 
and threads. And I need to continue that post something. I try to post something every day during the marketing time. And that is, that's an amor- enormous time suck. I, I just, you know, like you said, it's just so much effort to, to market a book, but at the same time, you know, I have been in the position in the past with my books where the publisher has set it out, you know, it's gotten published and I didn't know enough to market it. And it's up to the publisher. And I've had some books really do well based on the publisher's help. My, maybe they hired a publicist for me or put me on a book tour, but I've had other books just kind of sit there. And I started mm. to realize that it was very much the author's responsibility, especially now, yeah. to get their book out there. Interesting. So you say you're active on social media. What channels do you prefer? Oh, gosh. It depends on what group I'm looking at. Um, let's see. Instagram and threads are probably okay. my two biggest. And then Facebook. I have a real community on Facebook, but it's um, older people and it's more my family and friends. And I find Instagram is less that. It's more, I get more exposure on Instagram. I used to be on Twitter X but I've kind of stopped now. It's changed. I'm not really fond of it anymore. That's, those are my main ones. LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn and it's a business focus. So if I can figure out how to post something about my book, that's about business, kind of a business orientation, I'll do well. Or if I have an event, I often get a lot of response on LinkedIn for, for events. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, wow. There's a lot of them out there. I know. I like Blue Sky. I don't know anything about that, but I'm interested in in figuring it out. It's just what's Blue Sky? I've heard of it. I don't know. It's a new. uh, So it's social media. It's a. It's called Blue Sky. Blue Sky. (laughs) Is it for authors only, or uh, there are a lot of authors on it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's Mastodon is another one. I these are ones I I other author that other authors that I know are on these, but I I don't know anything about it. So. Yeah, I found that like each platform has different uh, audience Mm -hmm. and I try to be active on all of them, but it's really hard. And like I try to focus on one uh, and then kind of replicate it uh, uh, or repurpose it on others. But the main focus is is one. Uh, And for authors, uh, I I focus on LinkedIn, honestly. Okay. because I do both creative writing and business writing and kind of LinkedIn. Uh, for me, I get the, the most engagement on LinkedIn. Yeah. And I get a lot of, I still need clients as well to support my creative fiction. Because, <laughs> you know, as you know, creative writing does not pay the bills. Mm-hmm. Um, so LinkedIn is where I get my clients. And at the same time, I promote my books. Uh, so that great. works for me yeah, um, as, as kind of a hybrid for both. And I also got some coaching client, people who want to write a book mm-hmm. and also was through LinkedIn. So that's at least for me. Uh, but, you know, it's but uh, uh, Instagram is great for authors and TikTok. Have you been uh, experimenting on TikTok? I'm on TikTok and I'm, you know, I'm okay. a, it's funny. I'm, I'm a word person, not a visual not a yeah, not a movie yeah. person and so the effort of making videos or getting videos all the time for TikTok was just too much and i just i'm like all, i'm like much, all yeah. about words really so yeah, the thing yeah. that i've i liked actually i forgot to mention but the best one that i found is Substack so i have a mm. a newsletter that i've written since 2008 every friday and i've got a number every you know friday, thousands yeah. of followers on that and i i published it on i moved it to Substack in april of last year and the community there has just been fabulous and it's, you know, really writing oriented, creative arts oriented. And I just feel like I'm at home, you know, much more than I do on any of the others. So Substack is oh, number that's one. Interesting. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I, I have Substack too, but uh, I'm on and off. Uh-huh. <laughs> sort of. But that's good to know. I'll, I'll follow you. Actually, a number of authors I um, had on this put- podcast are also on Substack. But that's good to know. So you think Substack is more for authors yeah. rather than other places, huh? That's that's good to know. See yeah, I like it too. I like about. it for the um, the writerly community. I guess that's the thing. People are really engaged, and more so than you know, Instagram is great, and li- they're all good. But they're just 
you have to find the one that you really like. Like you said, you know, focus on one. So I guess yeah. right now I'm focusing mostly on Substack. Good for you. Yeah. I'll, I'll follow you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So what's next for Mary? What's next for Mary? Well, last bets, trying to get that out and get it published, not published, but get it um, into people's hands until it's published. Okay. And pre-orders are happening now. I'm I checked Amazon this morning and it's already number one on two of the categories. Oh, wow. So that is very cool. That's from the blogger tour that once again, you know, that's Good really, you. really, Good Susie's done it again. And then after that, I've got short stories that I've published and I, I would like to compile them into a collection. So that's probably down the road though. I want to take a break for a while. This has been I've had two books back to back. There, it was. It's been really wild. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Wow. Um, and I think the last thing I want to ask is: you coached uh, uh, writers. What are I think the top? Uh, forget about the advice. We know the advice. I want to hear about the mistakes. The what mistakes are the I've top made. Mistakes. No, the the oh the mistakes emerging or oh, my co coaching clients yes, yes, yes. Oh. they they do they continue <laughs> to do, and that's kind of hindering their their progress and their success. So I, that we can all learn from yeah. that. I think the most common thing is that people feel like as soon as they have a draft put together, it's publishable, and I think they don't realize mm -hmm. that editing is kind of, I'd say, ninety percent of the process. You definitely yeah. can enjoy the free write of the flow write of getting a draft together. And that's a huge accomplishment that a lot of people don't get to. Yeah. So getting your manuscript done, drafted, is really good. But to realize that the editing process is the next step, I think that that would save a lot of people some heartache if they actually planned on that rather than be disappointed when someone gives them feedback and says, well, you know, characters aren't quite there yet or I don't understand this plot point. So that would be yeah. my first thing is to be, really be aware that, yes, you've run a marathon with this draft and it's now done and that's fabulous. But now you have the next stage, which is the editing stage. And that's so important. Yeah. I can't stress it enough. I That's where the book really comes into its own is during the editing stage in my experience. Yeah, I just posted something on LinkedIn and got a lot of reaction, which is, I finally invested in an editor. Uh, you know, you have to, to pay money out of your pocket. And it was amazing the feedback that I got from my uh, uh, this manuscript I'm working on. And uh, I would not have gotten that feedback only from better writers or from my writing group or any of that. So, like, I had to pay for a, a professional uh, editor who worked with, like, New York Times bestseller. And it's amazing what she noticed, the, the, the research that actually she did <laughs> on my behalf to make sure everything I have is accurate. And I use a lot of Arabic words, right? Uh, because my characters are originally from the Middle East or from, of, from Arab countries or based there. And she actually checked the Arabic. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't speak Arabic, but she checked it. So that was for me. <laughs> it's like, well, and she noticed some consistent um, inconsistency with the how I uh, wrote them in English, how I um, transcribed them in English, and uh, that for me was like, wow, <laughs> she did a lot of work that I didn't do in my own native language. So it was, it was amazing. Um, and also the, the, you know, the characters, the flow, the changes of point of view, all of that, it's like you're suddenly you had blindfolds and somebody took them off and it's, and I'm, I've been enjoying like just going through everything again. And so I, I, you know, I had to put my ego aside mm -hmm. and I had to poke a hole in my pocket. <laughs> but hopefully the investment both emotionally and, and financially is uh, will, will be worth it. But yeah, it, it was a fascinating experience for me. It's so good that you had a positive experience because now editing is going to be completely okay. Yeah. But you'll also yeah. share that with other people, other writers. So maybe they'll they'll try it. Because I think some people yeah. have a negative experience, so they they stop. 
but it, it can be very yeah. positive. And like you're saying, that opens all these doors for you as the writer. You see things you didn't see. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So Mary, how can people get in touch with you? How can they buy your book? Just tell us how, how can they reach you? Well, you can go to my website, marycarolmore.com. And that's two R's, two L's and two O's. Uh, just to be able to spell it right, marycarolmore.com. And on there will be all the information of buying my book. But it's available on all the bookstores, uh, Amazon, Bookshop, Barnes & Noble, et cetera, et cetera. And you can also visit my Substack, which is marycarolmore.substack.com. And that's a weekly free writing newsletter for writers at all stages, fiction and nonfiction, with lots of tips publishing information, marketing information, just everything about my journey in, as a writer and, and also um, with my publishing experience. And it's been fun to write. And um, those are the two places I would send people right now. Thank you very much. Of course. And thank you for joining um, sure. me today. I, I personally learned a lot from you, from someone with your experience. And, you know, we'll definitely stay in touch. And for anyone who is listening or watching, thank you for joining us today for another episode of Read and Write with Natasha. And until we meet again. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Read and Write with Natasha. I'm your host, Natasha Times. If today's episode inspired you in any way, please take the time to review the podcast. Remember to subscribe and share this podcast with fellow book lovers. Until next time, happy reading, happy writing.